send off Adrian up the middle, Rome. Hey the there, 20, Minnesota the left the 25. Welcome to the episode 2 of the episode of the Halloween is or is already past. We bleed purple and our bones are gold. The space time is coming out of our own behold. We are Minnesota Vikings fans. We love when a place goes. And I thank you all for listening. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. This is episode number 73 of the Purple People podcast. It is titled Pack to the Future. Oh, I love that one. That Of course, you know, Green Bay Packers, eh? they're mm-hmm. a football team. And I'm a big Back to the Future fan, so any <laughs> anytime you can make a pun off that one, I I'm I pleased. do my best. I've been yeah. trying to get in all of them that I could. I mean, I've had Back to the Future, but uh, I, I got to keep doing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, let's roll right into the quick hits because I know that you're itching to talk about that football game. Oh, yeah, I'm sure we will both have a lot to say about about that one. But let's get some quick hits in first. On Monday Night Football against the Giants, quarterback Josh Freeman suffered a concussion. Mm-hmm. Past that, they named Christian Ponder the starter. A lot of speculation out there as to whether or not the concussion that Freeman sustained was a real thing or if it was a manifestation of the coaching staff. I believe he suffered the concussion while watching the game tape afterwards and seeing how bad it was, and it just, it gave him a concussion. Yeah, the joke I heard was that someone slapped him in the back of the head during tape review, and that was the cause of it. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, concussions aren't really a joking matter, so seriously, if he is concussed, get better soon. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, because we might need you. He'll be starting next week. But let's talk about a Vikings legend, because I love talking about them. Yeah, me too. Joey Browner, Vikings safety, entered Minnesota's Ring of Honor on Sunday night's game against the Green Bay Packers. you got to love Joey Browner. Big congratulations to him. Mm-hmm. Fantastic player. I was talking to my friend Mike about Joey, because uh, he's old enough to remember him playing. And uh, he said that, yeah, he'd go out there and smack people around up and down the field. And just a very deserving player to be in the Vikings Ring of Honor. Absolutely. Very physical defensive back. Couldn't ask for much more. Do we know precisely? Uh, obviously, they're going to be moving the Ring of Honor to the new uh, building, but do we know precisely how they're going to be displaying the player names in the new facility? I'm assuming the same way along the lower concourse. Yeah? Yeah, I'm assuming that. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Garcia, another legend <laughs> in the NFL, has said that he is open to returning to the NFL and being a member of the Minnesota Vikings to mentor Josh Freeman. Were the bunt of enough jokes without bringing in Jeff Garcia? No offense to him, but uh, thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> Remember when I told you that the Vikings signed defensive end Justin Tratow to the, the, to the team and how they were going to use him on maybe special teams, but he probably wouldn't see the field much? Mm-hmm. Well, he's not with the Vikings anymore. They they have released him. Yeah. And if you remember tight end Chase Ford from the preseason, he has taken his place on the roster. So that transaction happened. Spielman sure loves his uh, quick roster moves like that, doesn't he? We've seen quite a few of those this season. And some of them don't make a lot of sense, including this one which left me scratching my head and trying to figure out why, but the Vikings released cornerback Bobby Felder from injured reserve. Yeah, I don't... I don't know either. Uh, Of all the positions to be releasing talent from, I realized that he was on IR. Corner is not one that they ought to be doing that with. That ought to be stockpiling talent at that point. Bobby Felder was on injured reserve, so he didn't count against the roster head count. His salary didn't count against anything. I I I really don't understand the move. Spielman's the mastermind behind the operation, so I'm I'm sure there's some kind of logic behind it. We're just not privy to whatever. Did you like that picture that I posted in the Vikings den there as to which Rick will last through the through the season? And I, one was Rick Spielman, and the other one was Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. <laughs> uh, Rick Grimes, definitely. <laughs> and my last quick hit is the happy yet depressing one. Pro Bowl voting is underway. Yeah. So uh, if you go to NFL.com, you can vote for 
they say to vote for your favorite players, but I say vote for the player that deserves to be there. <laughs> they, does it really say vote for your favorite players? It does. Like, d- don't vote for who's doing good. Just vote for the guy that you recognize. They always say vote for your favorite players. They never <laughs> say who is the most worthy. It's your favorite, I guess. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to vote for Denard Robinson to the Pro Bowl then. And under guards... Both Charlie Johnson and Brandon Fusco are listed, so <laughs> get well, on there and vote away. Let's vote them both to the Pro Bowl so that some Pro <laughs> Bowl quarterback can just get the shit kicked out of him for the entire <laughs> If Peyton Hillis can make the Madden cover, Charlie Johnson can make the Pro let's, Bowl. <laughs> Charlie Johnson, 2013 Pro Bowl MVP. I'm calling it right oh, now, Adam. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's nice to have a little bit of fun before we just completely tear into the team. And, but on a happy note, I do think that there is one Viking that has a very solid chance of making it, and it's not Adrian Peterson. It's Cordero Patterson. I do, too. Um, let me talk about my Cordero stat before we forget about it. Now, I have verified this one over on ESPN, uh, because when I first read it, I thought, there's no way in hell that's true. But uh, Cordero Patterson leads the league... And kickoff returns for touchdowns. He has two of them, and there's only one other kick return that's went in for a touchdown, and that is Trendon Holiday. Trendon. So yeah, Trendon, which we know Adam's a fan of him. I so am. guys, definitely be voting Cordero to the Pro Bowl. Um, out of 18 attempts, his average is 39.1 yards per return on kickoffs. And like I said, he leads the league with uh, two touchdowns. 18 returns, two touchdowns, one out of every nine goes to the house. Yeah, I, I'm loving it. Pretty good ratio. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that, I'm going to give my game ball away right now and hand it to Cordero Patterson because he deserves it. Yeah, I actually uh, forgot. So I'm going to wing this segment right now. And I'm going to agree with you. And I'm going to go out of everyone on that game. Yeah, Cordero Patterson was... Probably the most deserving of a game ball. Absolutely. Yeah. I and mean, the 109-yard kickoff return for a touchdown tied an NFL record. Mm-hmm. The kid's got speed, athleticism. He's elusive. He's everything that you want from a return man. He had a couple nice catches, too. Uh, he did. He, they, he got a little more involved in the offense, yeah. which was nice to see. And there was the one that Ponder overthrew him, uh, that he was, he was open. He, he burned his two defenders and was open in the middle of the field and it should have been a touchdown but it went about five yards over the top of his head (laughs) just uncatchable but there was the other one that he had along the sidelines where he jumped up and did the you know high point in it and brought it down and oh yeah Cordero needs to be a bigger part of the offense but they're slowly getting him uh involved in it so that that's an improvement for this coaching staff now, I'm going to go first on my donkey so I can give Kyle a little bit of time to figure out who he wants his to be. Okay. Unless he's already got one figured out. I'm, th- I'm thinking. I went with Alan Williams. Defensive now, coordinator. Yes. Yeah. The effort that the defense put on out there was just atrocious. I mean, every drive the Packers had ended in points. Every drive. Mm-hmm. The Packers didn't have to punt once. Yeah. The entire game. The defense was non-existent. They gave up third downs. They gave up fourth downs. They gave up rushing touchdowns. They gave up touchdowns right up the gut. It was disgusting. They scored every single time they had the ball, didn't they? They absolutely did. Yeah, that's just disgusting. Points on the board every drive. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to figure out who I want to go with. Uh... Because you know, there aren't a, there aren't very many options, right? Yeah, and there's so few options on this uh, stellar team that we have here. I you know I could go with Bill Musgrave, but actually, I want to say that I I honestly do feel like I there was improvement in Musgrave's play calling this week. I seen some things that I liked from him, um, so I'm I'm gonna save a little bit of that uh, for later on. Yeah, because you got me baffled uh, i'm the exact opposite but i'm sure we'll talk plenty about that yeah well it's still a little bit of improvement adam not not much but for for bill i'm i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt on a couple things that i've seen here uh i'm just gonna go ahead 
because I don't have one. I'm going to defer this week and just say that, uh, you know, the whole team needs to play better. The whole team, just as a whole, is my donkey. Uh, they need to step it up in a, a lot of areas on the field, both offensively and I think defensively is the big thing, is that you've, like you said, you've got to stop teams on third down. And that goes deeper than, you know, I agree with Alan Williams. Um, but, you know, that that's everyone on that defense, from your front four to your corners to your safeties to it's they, they got to do better as a unit. Well, I would like to give away an honorary donkey award then. OK. And my honorary donkey award goes to Jared Allen. Now, you can stand on the sidelines and you can say that this is the worst defense you've ever been on your whole life. And that's fine. You know, if you believe that, that's cool. Mm -hmm. It's probably true. <laughs> but when you're not helping, then you can't say anything. Yeah. He registered zero tackles that game. Mm -hmm. He ha got no pressure against inferior offensive tackles. I mean, to me, I don't mind a guy that talks some smack every once in a while. I don't. As long as you can back it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are on a basketball team, and you're scoring 40 points a game, and the rest of your team's scoring six, yeah, go ahead, complain a little bit. But when you're Jared Allen, and you're out there doing absolutely nothing, when the Vikings could be getting a little more time for Everson Griffin to be there, what what's the point in having him out there? I agree with you, Adam. And I think Jared Allen is frustrated. Uh, he's a veteran. His... Years in the league are, you face it, they're they're coming to an end here shortly. They're numbered after a couple seasons. They're numbered, and he he doesn't want to he doesn't want to put up with this. And I I understand where he's coming from. Although, well, if I, he wants to be part of a Super Bowl winning team or a contender, then he has to be a part of that. Literally, he can't just ride along. And I hate saying that about Jared Allen because of the production and the success that he's had in the past. But, man, it looked like he was on cruise control the mm -hmm. entire game. Although, to be fair, Jared Allen's cruise control is it's still pretty, pretty darn good when he's out there. And uh, it's, you know, it's not entirely his fault that secondary can't hold up and they're not getting much pressure up the middle, and uh, he can only, you know, you can only go 110%. So many snaps. You, you can't know. go 110% at all. That's impossible. Well, thank you, Mr. Mathematician, Adam Carlson. Sorry, but that, I went to college for math. It's kind of what I did. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, uh, you can only give so much every play, and when it's not getting done... You're going to get winded. You're going to get gassed at some point. And I, I, like I said, I do understand it. I, I really do. I mean, Brian Robinson had four total tackles, mm -hmm. one tackle for a loss. And in my opinion, he had a much better game. He did. And I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm struggling with it. But mm -hmm. let's go into the game review and let's start talking about the offense. I'm sure we'll talk more about the defense here later. Okay. Let's start with Bill Musgrave. Uh, we've already okay. we've already kind of touched on it. Uh, let me tell you why I think that I seen a little bit of improvement from Musgrave's play calling. There was okay. a few things that you can point to and you can say, "Look, he's trying. He's trying to get different things done on the field." I seen him run a legitimate two back set with Adrian Peterson and Toby Gerhardt, and they did it. I I don't know because I can't tell what they're doing exactly every play watcher at home on TV, but I've seen it two, three times, both Adrian and Toby on the field at the exact same time. I like that. I, that's a different wrinkle that we haven't seen so far. Uh, okay. We've we seen them attempt Joe Webb and at the Wildcat. The return of oh. the Wildcat Blazer package happened one time and unfortunately, half the offensive line jumped early, and we never got to see anything from it. Now, you mean fortunately? Un I'm, I'm going to go unfortunately. We didn't get to see anything from it. Because oh. 
quarterback. If you can't operate an offense. You can't operate a gimmick offense too. But I mean, get the but, offense but, down but, before but, you start but, working but. in the gimmicks. Hold on, hold on a minute, Adam. It's quarterback by committee at this point. And no, Christian Ponder was the quarterback. No, you, you don't have anyone. When you have Christian Ponder, you don't have anyone. Let's Christian just... Ponder did not lose this game for the Vikings. Okay, but here's my point. It's quarterback by committee. We don't have anyone solid under center. So why not throw Joe Webb out there at Wildcat, give him one read if it's not there, run with That's basically what Christian Ponder does anyway. When he's on the but, field, and Webb is a better athlete when it comes to using his legs and running than what Christian Ponder is. So why not try that? He's out there on the field as a receiver anyway. So this isn't like in previous seasons where you're taking your quarterback out, you're putting Webb in, and everyone knows what's happening. It's really easy to all of a the sudden. The quarterback was out for that play. No, he lined up. Didn't he? Didn't they run Ponder? No, he out? was. He wasn't even on the field. So they did sub him out. Oh yeah, I didn't catch that part. But I'm saying is that it would be really easy to switch into that wildcat with Webb playing receiver anyway. And at this point, why not? Because they're trying to figure out their future at quarterback. Now I know that they've already kind of put the no stamp on Ponder. Mm-hmm. But since they still have him, and since. Freeman has the concussion. Why not get him a little more playing time? That is why Matt Castle is on the bench when, honestly, Matt Castle gives this team the best chance to win right now. <laughs> it's because they're trying to evaluate a little more from Ponder and Freeman. And let me go into a little bit about okay. my rant here about um, Musgrave. Okay. All right. When you are an offensive coordinator and you take a look down your offensive weapons and you say, okay, we got Christian Ponder at quarterback. He's okay. He's not good. He's okay. Mm-hmm. We got these wide receivers. That's all right. We'll, we'll pass to him. But then when you look and you see, okay, I've got Adrian Peterson. I'm going to get him 13 carries on the game. And that's it. I mean, this, this was a competitive game. It was a one score game, at least through halftime. Mm-hmm. And actually a bit through that, even, somewhat into the third quarter it was still a two score game i mean things were blowing up after that but that's because the vikings couldn't control the clock they couldn't move the chains the time of possession was disgusting the packers had twice the amount of possession time as the vikings now that's going to get your defense tired it's going to get your offense frustrated and struggling and all because the offensive coordinator is too damn stubborn to play their best player when he knew that that was a winning strategy last year. I will not understand it, and I will not tolerate it. And I'm going to go, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a moment, Adam, and I'm going to say Adrian is not playing exactly the way we're used to seeing Adrian Peterson play. I love that you're saying this because I have a counter for this. And I know it's offensive line has a lot to do with it, but I think he's more injured than what we know. And I think what has happened with his son has affected him more mentally than what we know. And I think the new running back rule, the the crown of the helmet rule with it, I think has got him a little off his game. And I think that is why we're seeing... A little bit different from Adrian. Now, I like the fact that in this game, he played more aggressive, which is what I wanted to see. I when d- he got the opportunity, which I was did, off. I did see him go out there and lower his head and just hit some people and make some hits. So I think he's he's getting back into the swing of things. If that means he's more healthy physically and mentally and getting in the right place, I think that's good. But I, I do understand to an extent, uh, why they weren't giving him the carries that we're used to seeing. I don't understand one bit, especially when you have a running back that's averaging over four yards a carry, and you you could pick up first downs easy, Mm -hmm. especially when you just hand off the ball and pound and pound. That's why they brought Toby Gerhardt in, so that when Adrian Peterson was tired of running the football and 
just too exhausted, mm-hmm. they could have this other Mack truck come in and get him a breather. Well, guess what? The Vikings offense isn't even on the field long enough for Adrian Peterson to probably play, break a sweat. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't worry about that. But I guess uh, that's all the harping on Musgrave I'll do for now because <laughs> I really don't see him being in Minnesota after this year, the way he is mismanaging his talent. No, Musgrave will be gone because there is a gross negligence of I uh, get the ball to Cordero Patterson, get it to Greg Jennings, get it to Kyle Rudolph and Adrian Peterson. It's not that hard to figure out. And Run the ball, supplement the offense with the pass. Mm-hmm. That's the way this team is was built. And you brought in those wide receivers to be supplementary weapons. Now, I understand that they paid Greg Jennings so much. And I understand that they spent such a high draft pick on Cordero Patterson. Mm -hmm. But the focus of this team is Adrian Peterson. Mm -hmm. And he should be the guy who gets the rock and runs with it. There's a reason why he was the MVP last year. And you only have your franchise player after the bye... Since, since after the bye, he's averaged 12 touches per game. Now, when you think about that game, that is four quarters, like I wrote in my Viking Age article. Mm-hmm. That's three carries per quarter. Disgusting. Yeah, it's unacceptable. I, I, I agree with you. But I'm going to go on my happy note and say, hey, did you see that catch by John Carlson, huh? <laughs> I don't even remember. He he caught a pass. He did. He caught a short pass for three yards. Got out of bounds. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I must not have been paying attention. Uh, what's the <laughs> what's the over under on John Carlson just not making this team? Oh, I hope he year? does because I I bought the jersey, man. Well, you can get away with your last name's Carlson, so you can. That's true. That's you true. You can get away with it. But you were right. Cordero Patterson was targeted three times, had two catches for 26 yards. Well played there. Kyle Mm -hmm. Rudolph got more involved, caught all the passes that were thrown to him, 51 yards. It seems like Rudolph always gets more involved when Christian Ponder is the quarterback. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that, but. They got a good rapport together. You know, they've worked. Say what you will about Christian, but he's been here for three seasons and Rudolph has been here for. Was he here for all same three? Draft. Yeah, same amount, same draft. So, you know, they, they've they got a good rapport of working together with one another, and Ponder knows he can trust him. And uh, I hope that Josh Freeman was watching and seeing the four receptions for 51 yards and uh, can get him involved in next week's game plan as well, too. Oh, yeah. Greg Jennings, the multi-million dollar man there, had a catch for nine yards on three targets. Mm-hmm. He is definitely not living up to the potential. If you take away that one game with two touchdowns, it's which is not worth it. Not his fault, and entirely not his fault that he's not getting the production that we expect and want from him. There's just so much wrong with this team that that's just that's just one story and a a bunch of issues going on right now. Toby Gerhardt got some carries during garbage time, got in the end zone. Perhaps they were hoping to up his trade value a little bit. He ran over Greg Jennings to get there. Did you see that? Because as of this recording, we're recording on Monday night, Mm -hmm. right after the football game. Mm -hmm. The trade deadline is Tuesday at 4 p.m. That's Eastern time. So... We, as of this recording, have not heard of any Vikings trades going down before the deadline. Pure speculation. Personally, I don't think we're going to see any, but we'll find out. That'd be a total waste, man. It would. We'll find out come tomorrow. It's true. Yeah. Uh, Let's flip over to the defensive side of the ball because I don't even want to talk about the Vikings offensive line anymore. Yeah. Yeah, That's like beating a dead horse. and. We ton- know Charlie Johnson lays on the ground and flops like a fish, hoping to block people. There, we know Fusco yeah. gets pushed back into the quarterback. There are t- we know I, all this stuff. I was just going to say, there are times where a dead horse may be better at blocking than what we've seen from our offensive line this season. So, yeah. so let's just all agree, Vikings offensive line is sucking terribly. I, 
I hope they're loving their snowmobiles. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. They'll be riding them right out of Minnesota if they keep playing like that. <laughs> hope they get good gas mileage. I hope so too. Yeah. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They're they're rich and sucking, so I guess that's yeah. Okay, defensively, let's talk about players <laughs> that, <laughs> that I like. Okay, let's just the players that I like. Xavier Rhodes, uh, he's a rookie, and you're seeing sure rookie growing pains with him. But just stick with the guy, people. We've got something in him. I see that. I definitely he's a guy see that. that. I'm excited to see develop. Yep. He's got size. He's got instincts. He just needs to adjust and be a part of a unit. And I think that's the problem is that all these pieces of the unit keep shifting. And it's hard to find any consistency. Yeah. There is no uh, unit around him. Right. Well, I mean, it's Josh Robinson to help him out. Yeah. Did you see that? Josh Robinson get the ball whizzed right by his head. For the oh, touchdown, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although to be fair, uh, they did. Uh, what what's his name? Aaron Rodgers did that to Chad Greenway, right? Well, Greenway's a linebacker, so yeah, a little bit different. He he does have to his to the asshole's credit, and I'm talking about Rodgers. He does have <laughs> extremely good ball placement. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, it, he can throw a mighty good football. He, I bet you he can throw a football over them mountains. What what mountains? Whoa. Napoleon Dynamite. Never mind. I hated that movie. You don't don't oh, ever yeah. don't ever. But <laughs> but uh, it, it's easy to be pissed off at Josh Robinson on that play. Oh yeah. But man, he, his awareness. He was staying step by step with the man, but yeah, he had no idea where the football was coming. No, it's swing your head around, kid, and look. <laughs> I again thought that Andrew Sandejo played fairly well. Yeah, he did. Another start for a guy that honestly isn't expected to do much in this offense, uh-huh. but is thrown into starting safety roles. Uh, we saw Mr. Raymond go down with an injury. I didn't have a chance to see what was going on there. You know who's quietly pretty awesome? Latroy guy. Latroy guy on. You know, I was really down on him coming into this year. Yeah. But he has been playing better. He's mm-hmm. been getting a little bit of pressure up the middle. He's been making tackles. And to be honest, he deserves a little more of my respect. So yeah. I'll give a little that. more, a little more recognition. We got to gotta throw that out there for Latroy. Um, uh, I'm, I'm actually learning to like the rotation of him and Fred Evans. Yeah, there's a positive. Now stop <laughs> getting all the stupid penalties there. Hey, we've we found a positive, Adam. <laughs> there's always a bright side. <laughs> Um, where's Sharif Floyd? Uh, he's probably uh, in Minnesota somewhere, is my yeah. guess. Where was he uh, against Green Bay? Do you remember his name being called for anything? Uh, no, but I did see him chasing down Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. He I, uh... There, but he tried. I guess I'm a little disappointed in... I, I, I had expected at this point in the season that we would be hearing his name called more often, and it just doesn't seem like we're hearing as much from Sharif as what I had expected. So, no, the I'm not the, I'm not saying him. I'm not saying he's a bust or anything. Yeah. I'm just saying that we expected more from him. I'm uh, including you because you just said that. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying either, but. It does kind of enter your mind. Maybe there's a reason why those teams passed on him. Now, I don't mean to get... You know, I don't <laughs> want to throw that out there. So I'm just saying I still have plenty of faith in Sharif. And maybe it's going to take him a couple, you know, this season. And next year he'll kick on and be more of what we're expecting. But uh, now, When I was watching the draft, I, I honestly wasn't a huge fan of Sharif Floyd when they said he might be taken even up to number two by the Raiders. And I... I just kind of shook my head, and I was like, no, he's mm-hmm. he's a mid-round to late first-round talent, and that was about where the Vikings got him, so mm-hmm. I kind of understand that, but at the time, he has this in his game, and there were better defensive tackles that were in the draft, and they did go earlier than him, so I'm not saying the Vikings made a mistake or anything, mm-hmm. but we'll with see. time, I think that Floyd really needs to improve his game he does <laughs> yeah 
Bottom line. It, it, I, I feel like he should be making a bigger splash than, than what he is on this defense. But. but let's talk about Aaron Henderson for a minute. Kind of awesome, isn't Aaron it? Henderson was making tackles yeah. all over the field. Now, I still do like him better as an outside linebacker. I think the Vikings need a guy in the middle of that 4-3 that's a little bit better in coverage. But overall, Henderson is making the tackles that he's asked to make, and he is kind of developing into that linebacker that you were hoping he'd be. He's he's more serviceable than I think people are willing to give him credit for. Right. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'm trying to say here. Because there are, there is a weak spot on that linebacker core and I'm not sure what they can do about it. Uh, I know they have players that they haven't tested out yet. And there's a lot of young guys that are waiting for their opportunity. So maybe he's already on the team. I don't know, but Mm -hmm. I like Henderson. I like, of course, Greenway, but they need that third guy. They do a big time because those linebackers are essential in this defense. They do. And, uh, I think that's going to be a spot that they'll be addressing in next season's draft. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, we so, saw decent play from the special teams with Blair Walsh and uh, Jeff Locke had some good punts, average 46.5. He's uh, getting plenty of workouts this season. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota didn't get a chance to return a punt because Green Bay never did. Uh, Minnesota also didn't get a turnover, which is essential in beating the Green Bay Packers. <clears throat> all in all, this is a game that I never really felt like the Vikings were in, even though they got that touchdown off the opening kickoff. I never had the feeling that the Vikings were ever going to take control of the game. And that is something that, as a fan, you hate. Mm-hmm. Because you should have that optimism. You should be excited. But I'm not. I mean, earlier in the year, I would have trouble sleeping at night. Because I was so excited to see the Vikings play. Yeah. I'm not quite there anymore. (laughs) We're all uh, very beat and very tired right now. And we don't even play for the... Like, can you imagine how the players must feel? Uh Uh-huh. I don't understand how a team with this much talent on both sides of the football is going to go down as being as bad as what they are in the record books. All right. I, I got to ask you, though, Kyle. Yeah. How mixed in emotions were you when you saw Micah Hyde bring back that 93 yard punt for a touchdown? Uh, honestly, I was just waiting for something like that to happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I'm at the point where I I have coined the phrase among the people that I watch the football game with, the next stupidest thing. Because every time the Vikings get the football, either offensively, defensively, special teams, whatever, I basically am waiting for the next stupidest thing to happen on the field. Whether that's a missed tackle that ends up letting someone go in for a score, or a kick return, or a punt return, or a stupid interception, or it's you're just at the point where you're waiting for something dumb to happen. And when you think you've seen the stupidest thing, oh, that's easily the stupidest thing that's ever going to happen in the football game. Guaranteed, ten minutes later, something stupider will happen, and you will be mystified as to how. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it feels that way. But honestly, this team has talent. It can get better. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure it'll be this year. <laughs> uh, this year, I posted the schedule and challenged someone to find me another win. And if you're the Vikings, you hope that towards the end of the season, Josh Freeman really starts to come on and get things clicking, and maybe you can pull out an upset win at the end of the season. Maybe. I mean, some Vikings fans have already converted, and they are fans of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
hoping that they get some wins so that the Vikings move up in the draft already. Uh-huh. It's not even halfway through the Vikings season. The Vikings have played seven games. Yeah. I mean, it's too early to be thinking draft, guys. I'm Let's th- get some wins. I'm thinking draft. Let's I be respectable here. I want the Vikings to end respectably. There's no honor in ending the season just getting completely wiped out. I know, but the honor. but just think if we could have slightly sucked a little bit more, we might have had Andrew Luck. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I, actually, um, all all clowning aside, I want to beat Green Bay once this year. I hate as a Viking fan when Green Bay beats us twice in one season. So I don't care if we're playing the next time at Lambeau Field. Uh, Josh Freeman better be having the game of his life. We're going to beat him in Lambeau. We, I mean, we had better. And living in Michigan, it's Detroit for me. Yeah. I, I can't have the Lions beat the Vikings twice because the Lions fans around here, they've got big mouths and they're oh, not afraid I'm sure. to use them. Yeah. Trust me, I'm hearing all about Kelvin mm-hmm. and... When Kelvin has more receiving yards than Christian Ponder has passing yards, you no, know? No, not just that. Kelvin Johnson had more yards receiving than the Vikings had total net yardage. That's true. Think That's about, true. I just looked at that. Yeah, ponder that thought for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sickening. Well, it says here that uh, 243, I don't remember what Kelvin had. 300 and... Uh, it, it was over 300, 320 some, wasn't it? It's insane. I know that much. It absolutely batshit crazy the day that he had. <laughs> but hopefully we'll have some really interesting trade news or uh, I doubt some it. Kind of, I don't know. But next week the Vikings go on the road against the Dallas Cowboys, and the Cowboys have another high-powered offense that. Was, they're going to be passing the ball all over the field, and the Vikings secondary is going to have to improve for the team to even have a chance in this game. I just thought of something funny that I read over Twitter when you said Dallas Cowboys. Someone tweeted out that the Vikings offense is so bad, Des Bryant's pissed off at him on the sidelines. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Terrible. Do you think we're going to win next week, Adam? Well, it's almost a stupid question to ask at this point, but uh, I, I I like to go into every game believing that there's a chance. I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. I but am, I'm not expecting a win. I wouldn't put money on it. I'm like you. I'm I'm always optimistic because I believe there's talent on this team, and they could maybe accidentally play like a professional team once or twice <laughs> for the remainder of this season. I, but I wouldn't count on it. Now, there was one interesting thing that I wanted to talk about before we sign off. Mm-hmm. And that was the starting quarterback for the game against the Cowboys. Now, I thought that it was really odd that they'd come out and say, okay, our starting quarterback is completely up in the air right now. But we know it's not going to be Matt Castle. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that either. It's like, well, it's between... Ponder and Freeman. And not Matt Castle. Fuck no, Matt not Castle. him. Not the guy we paid to bring in, you know. Yeah, not the, the guy, guy that got us the only not win the guy in the year. Yeah, he's won the only game we have this season. Not him. He's just completely out of it. Right. Why did we cut McLeod Bethel Thompson if Matt Castle is just going to be... Because Castle was brought in as the mentor, and now he's got two guys to mentor. Do you think Matt Castle wants to mentor either of these assholes right now? <laughs> I, mean, no. I mean, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, at least you're honest, because that's yeah, probably I, true. That's exactly what he's thinking right now. Like, <laughs> I, I ain't going to mentor either of these guys. Not that I think Matt Castle is going to be playing lights out football this time next year, starting for someone. Like, I don't he's think... a competitor. He wants to play. Yeah. And it's a complete disservice to him. The veteran that he is, the professional that he is 
for this team. The Vikings have a quarterback coach. They got an offensive coordinator who was a quarterback coach. You know, they've got all these guys that can help out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, why yeah, not? They bring in this guy that wants to compete and wants to be a starter. If they're going to... If they're going to do that, why not cut him? Bring in, <laughs> bring in Jeff George for a veteran minimum contract and just let Jeff George hold the clipboard because he, he wants to do that too. Yeah. So let him mentor and have... Jeff George runs a quarterback academy. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I know at this point we're getting kind of ridiculous, but... But honestly, it's like the there's almost... Gotten this ridiculous. There's almost more logic to that than what they're currently doing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, on that note, I think we better sign I, off. There's one more thing I wanted. To, I know we're running a little bit long, but Spielman, Frazier, uh, what's it? What's his name? Alan Williams. Alan Williams. Mike Prefer. Mike Prefer. <laughs> Which of these guys is <laughs> with us in 2014? Mike Prefer. Prefer. <laughs> <laughs> It's Spielman, uh, right? Spielman's the only guy coming back. Spielman and Prefer are coming back. Prefer, maybe someone wants on another team as an assistant head coach, or maybe, maybe I'm just... And I really think that with a better offensive coordinator, Leslie Frazier could be an excellent head coach, but this situation right now is going to be his downfall. It's so almost unfair to him but i don't know he's the one in charge of the team so well, kind of i'm i'm hearing on twitter that uh john gruden wants to get back into coaching and i'm telling you guys we can get gruden on this team uh i i'm sure he'd love to join a one in 15 team if that's how they end up yeah but we got talent we got talent that gruden can work with yeah, all the way to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we- on that note, <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And stay classy, Minnesota. <laughs>